Shalom, Most High in Christ bless. I'm Captain Benaya. Here reading for me today is Officer Yamin. Today we are going to be going over correction will come, despise it not. Because one thing we got to understand it in this truth, correction will come. We're all coming out of the world in which we learned everything contrary to the Bible, right? So watch this. Today's lesson is correction will come. Despise it not. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Uh -huh. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the scriptures say all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable, meaning that you are gaining something. It said it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. You see that the scriptures are for our correction. To get us right with the most high God. It says for instruction in righteousness. It is to instruct us to be righteous men and women, husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters. So guess what? When that correction comes out of the scriptures, despise it not. Hold that. Go to Proverbs 8 and 33. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 33. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. So the scriptures tell us to hear the instruction that comes out of the Bible because it brings you that wisdom. It makes you wise. It gives you understanding on how to conduct oneself. So when correction does come, when you stumble and the correction comes, the scriptures say, read it again. Hear instruction and be wise. Hear the instruction and get the wisdom so that you can be wise, read. And refuse it not. Because a lot of times when correction comes, we tend to get, we tend to get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rebellious. Sometimes you can get a rebellious spirit. Sometimes you can get a rebuttal spirit. Contentious. Sometimes you can get a contentious spirit. Sometimes you can get a refusing spirit. But the scripture says, hear instruction and refuse it not. Right? Go back. Read it again. First Timothy 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. All scripture is given by inspiration of God uh -huh. and is profitable it's for... It's profitable, meaning you're gaining... For doctrine. It's profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof, to reprove our steps. Go ahead. For correction. For what? Correction. For what? Correction. Read. For instruction in righteousness. That's why the scripture said, hear instruction and refuse it not, because it is to instruct you in righteousness. Read on. Verse 17. That the man of God. That the man or woman of God. Read. May be perfect. Uh -huh. Through thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see that? It is to thoroughly furnish us unto all good works. Watch this. Go to 1 Timothy 1 and verse 9. Because guess what? If you don't need correction, what are you here for? What are we here for if not the need to be corrected from what we was in the world to what we are becoming in this truth? Read that. 1 Timothy 1 verse 9. Uh -huh. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So if you think you got it already, the scripture says the law is not made for you. The law is not for a righteous man, go ahead. But for the lawless uh -huh. and disobedient. Because in the world, we were the lawless and disobedient. Go ahead. For the ungodly and for sinners, uh -huh. for unholy mm -hmm. and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, uh -huh. for manslayers, uh -huh. verse 10, for whoremongers, for, whoremongers. for them that defile themselves with mankind, Come on. for men stealers, Read. for liars, for what? For liars, Read. for per perjured persons, uh -huh. and if there be any other thing that is contrary to the sound doctrine. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. 
if any other thing that goes against what the scriptures say, we need correction in that. Matthew 9 and verse 12. Verse 12. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician. Christ said, they that already got it, if you already got it all together, it says, they that be whole already, you, you already got it, you, you, you Mr. or Mrs. Know-it-all, you got it already together. It says, you need not the physician, read. But they that are sick. But them that are sick, come on. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. Uh -huh. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Read on. For I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. You see that? He said he didn't come to call the righteous to, but sinners to repentance. Meaning what? If you're already righteous, you already got together, you don't need any correction, then you have no use for Christ. That's what the scriptures is saying. You see that? So we all need and, and are going to get and see some type of correction along the way. Right? Because the scriptures say if you already whole, then you need not the physician. Christ is that physician. Watch this. Go back to. Go back. Now go back to 1 Timothy 1 and 9. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. You see that if you're already righteous, if you already got it all together, you don't need the correction of the Lord. The scriptures say that this is not for you. You see that from there. Go to Proverbs 15 and 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 10. Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 10. Uh -huh. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Read. And he that hateth reproof shall die. So the scriptures say correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. What is the way that you're forsaking when you hate correction? Hold this. Let's go to John 14 and 6. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Oh, let me get there with you. Let me get there with you. What is the way that you are forsaking? The scriptures say that correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Read that. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Jesus what? I am the way. Read it again. Jesus saith unto him, mm -hmm. I am the way, uh -huh. the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the way is Jesus the Christ. If you are grievous in correction, then you're forsaking Christ altogether. Christ said, I am the way. You see that? Now go to Exodus 18 and 20. So for one, if correction is grievous to you, then you're forsaking Christ. Read what you got. Exodus 18 verse 20. Uh-huh. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Read it from the top. Verse 20. Uh -huh. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Teach them order and laws. Go ahead. And shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. So the way is the order and the laws. The laws of God and the faith of Jesus Christ is the way that you forsake when correction is grievous to you. Hold that. Go to Revelations 14 and 12. Because that is supposed to be the foundation of your walk. Is it Revelation 14 and 12 that yes, I want? Yes, sir. Read that. Revelation 14 verse 12. Uh -huh. Here is the patience of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. The way that you read in Exodus 18 and 20. Read. And the faith of Jesus. The way that you read in John 14 and 6. So now go back to Proverbs 15 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. Uh -huh. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. So if correction is grievous to you. If the words that's coming to, out of the Bible to get you right is grievous to you, the scriptures say that you forsake the way. You forsake the laws of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Your foundation in this walk. Go ahead. And he that hateth reproof shall die. And he that hates that reproof shall die. Shall die. Meaning it's only a matter of time. 
Let's go to the book of Isaiah 42 and 16. Uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 16. Is that what I want? Let me look at it. Yeah, go ahead. Isaiah 42 verse 16. Mm -hmm. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Because we are the blind. We were the blind. Before we knew this truth, we walked in blind ways. We walked in Christianity. We walked in the ways of our own minds. We walked in all these different ways of the world. And we were blind to the fact that we were the Israelites. We were blind to the fact that the Bible was our history book. We were blind to the fact that we were supposed to be keeping the laws of God. So read that again. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Because we didn't know Christ, the true Christ of the Bible. We didn't know the laws of the Most High. The scriptures say, I will bring the blind by a way that he knew not. Go ahead. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Because before this truth started coming out the way it is, we didn't know these paths. So that now God is saying, I will lead you down these paths. That straight and narrow path. Come on. I will make darkness light. I will make darkness light. Go ahead. Before them. Uh-huh. And crooked things straight. You see that? The Bible is going to make the crooked that is in us straight. Go ahead. These things will I do unto them and, and not forsake them. So the Lord says he's not going to forsake us. But guess what? That way he's going to bring us by is the correction that is in the Bible. You see that? From there, go to Sirach 21 and verse 6. The book of Sirach, the 21st chapter and the 6th verse. The book, the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 6. He that hateth to be reproved is in the way of sinners. So the scriptures say that he that hates to be reproved, or another word for that is corrected, According to the scriptures, it says you are in the way of sinners. You in the way. You see that? Read it again. He that hateth to be reproved is in the way of sinners. Come on. But he that feareth the Lord will repent from his heart. Because that is what the reproof or the correction is about. To bring forth repentance. To bring forth a righteous change in all of our lives. You see that? From there, go to Proverbs 15 and verse 5. The correction of the Lord is to bring that righteous change. It's, it's to bring repentance, meaning change in our lives. You see that? Matter of fact, be, before you get that, get uh, the Psalms 55, 19. Give me that. The book of Psalms. Chapter 55, verse 19. Remember, the, the, the correction of the Lord is to bring a righteous change in our lives. It's to bring forth that repentance. Repentance meaning change, right? Read that. Psalms 55, verse 19. Uh -huh. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Salah, because they have no changes. Because what? Have no changes. Read. Therefore, they fear not God. So if you have no changes, if you're the same way that you were when you came in and a year down the line, two years down the line, hell, six months down the line, you're still the same person that you were two and three years down the line. The scriptures say if you have no changes, the fear of God is not in you. You do not have a true fear of the most high God.
working so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew it sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sound wrong man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.